for the Dayton Flyers, play host to the Xavier Musketeers in a very important Midwestern Collegiate Conference matchup. Hello once again, I'm Dan Patrick, joining me some of my very close friends. And being a Dayton alumnus, you are quick to realizing that every game in this town is a big game for the Flyers. This one takes on a special significance, though, because it's not only a conference game, but Dayton and Xavier have played each other since 1919. Here to look at the game within the game, the former Virginia Cavalier head coach, Terry Holland, who looks at Xavier first. Pete Gill and Xavier Musketeers have been to the NCAA tournament six straight times. They'd like to go again. To do so, they've got to get great play from Jamie Gladden. Jamie Gladden is potentially the player of the year in the MCC. But more than that, they've got to get consistent play in the paint, and particularly from this man, Aaron Williams. Aaron is 6'9", is capable of having a spectacular game. Jim O'Brien, State and Flyers, a very young basketball team, characterized by good perimeter play, but this tells you the story. A freshman, 6'10", Chip Hare, plays around the basket, shoots the ball well from three-point range, he is the future for Dayton, and I think what you're going to see here today are two excellent young basketball teams using this game as a springboard to the NCAA tournament. They are separated by 50 miles in the state and two games in the conference. The players are wearing, so are we, so are the fans. We'll be back with the opening tip-off, the Flyers and Musketeers, right after this. First for our best ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Reebok, who reminds you that life is short. Play hard. And by Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. Welcome back to the UD Arena. Over 13,000 on hand. Not a ticket to be had in the UD Arena. The Flyers and the Xavier Musketeers. Here's the starting lineup for the Musketeers, our Reebok starting lineup. Xavier 14-9 and nine on the year, and the man to look for is Jamie Gladden. He had 28 in their first meeting with the Flyers. He's averaging 19 a game, and as Terry mentioned in the pregame, has a chance to be the conference player of the year. Pete Gillen. Gillen is one of the more entertaining coaches in the country, at least he was last night, as he spent about an hour with us, one-liner after one-liner, his seventh year at the helm. For the Flyers, starting lineup, and you look at Alex Robertson. He had nine steals against Notre Dame, including the one that led to the winning basket. They're coached by Jim O'Brien in his third year. Flyers in the home white, going left to right on your screen. West Coffey against Aaron Williams. by the Dayton Flyers. An excellent job by Derek Dukes anticipating the pass. You can't leave that guy open too often. Jamie Gladden will make you pay for it. Shooting over 50% from the floor. Jim O'Brien trying to stress yesterday, almost overstressing the fact that he wanted to play a physical game with this team. But it looks like they're getting off to that kind of start, Dan. Certainly both teams play man-to-man, -man, basically defensively, but... You're going to see a lot of gambling, particularly from Xavier. Their defense makes you handle the ball in a lot of different spots. Normally, they go after the steals themselves. Here's Coach O'Brien, the son-in-law of Jack Ramsey, the great NBA coach. He's had to change his game plan this year. He doesn't have the outside shooters he's had in previous years. He used to shoot the three wanted to score in the 90s, even in the hundreds if he wanted to. He's had to change that philosophy a little bit, and we saw that against Notre Dame in a 60-58 to 58 final. Well, both these teams are coming off post-game wins. 60-58, uh, and of course, Xavier, two-point win over Fordham in overtime. Aaron Williams. Brian Grant the follow. Yeah. She 
Rios uh, controls the rebound. And they move Derek Dukes locks it out of bounds. Well, he's aggressive. He's looking for those transition situations, a chance to break down the defense and take it to the basket. And I think you have to do that against Xavier. You've got to make sure that they don't gamble and get away with it. You've got to attack them at the other end of the floor. doesn't have a senior on the uh, starting lineup. In fact, the team, for that matter, a very, very young squad. Gladden misses badly, stretches with the rebound. the aggressiveness of the Flyers is surprising Xavier a little bit at this point. Xavier was given 50 tickets to this game, so you've got about 13,500 Flyer fans here and a couple of stragglers for the Xavier Musketeers. Stretching for three. Aaron Williams on the rebound and Michael Hawkins at the other end. Sure, both of these teams are getting tired of people talking about how young they are. <laughs> you know, you're, you're thinking about next year when you're talking about young teams. Uh, number 24, Alex Robertson, that's his second team. Second. Hawkins, good penetration there. And again, both teams are going to be aggressive with the basketball. I think Xavier's trying to get the feel of the game. They're passing around a little more maybe early in the game because they're on the road. I know Pete Gillen was concerned about the emotion involved in this game and could his team match it on the road with all these Flyer fans in here today. Aaron Williams, the tough angle. And that's a strong that's move, Aaron too. Williams. He didn't back off that shot at all. He turned into the defense, got bumped a little bit, and still made a tough shot. Stretchings to the hole. They're going to get Hawkins with a foul. Steve Gentry has checked in for the Musketeers. John Richter for the Flyers. And a costly foul on Alex Robertson at the other end, his second. And if they're going to win this game, they've got to keep him in the lineup. I like the way Dayton is attacking the pressure. They're advancing the ball to a guard up the floor. And, of course, that time stretches his ticket to the basket. That's the second time we've seen him do that. Derek Dukes did it earlier. They've got to make him pay the price. John Stretchens at the line for Dayton. Chip Harris in the lineup. Has a chance to be the newcomer of the year in the MCC. Played extremely well over the last six games. The reason why he didn't start is... Coach O'Brien gave McCore Sheok a chance to start in his final home game for the Flyers. Richter couldn't handle it. Gentry at the other end. Going to get coffee with the push from behind on Aaron Williams, his first. You can see how Dayton is defending the high-low there. They're backing off the man at the Dayton top. They know that he's not going to shoot the That's his first, team's third. Get a chance to see. They're really double-teaming down here. You can see Coffee backing off. Well, Coffee's actually making the foul. Chip Hare was backing off of the guy at the high post. Coffee with the block. Chip Hare doesn't like the numbers. Scrutchins. This is Hare. about the pace the flyers have been keeping it in the 60s and low 70s but the pace they're on right now and they want to get this thing running and going well the way xavier presses if you don't attack the basket you actually get yourself in trouble well, that's a great move there great aaron penetration and a good pass off aaron williams with four of xavier's first six and xavier takes their first lead aaron williams with the block but a piece of sean stretches and you're right they're taking it right to xavier well, the thing that Xavier does, they make you handle the ball at every spot. You saw Chip Hare out in the middle of the floor with it. He quickly got it to Sean Scrutchins, though, before he tried to do anything with it. And I think that's good, smart basketball. Sean Scrutchins at the line for Dayton, two throws. No, 
not only will they get some easy baskets, but they'll get to the free throw line. And they'll also put some fouls on that front line of, of uh, Xavier. That's going to be tough. Flyers played very sloppy basketball in the first meeting between these two, but Xavier did as well. Xavier plays that kind of way, though. They're going to press, they're going to force turnovers, they're going to be guilty of turnovers. It's not pretty basketball that Pete Gillen has a history of success. It's hard to argue with what he's done in his seven years there. And it's exciting basketball because you get a lot of open court situations. That's good defense, good help out inside. Three-pointer. That's a travel. Gonna get Dukes for traveling. Got a timeout on the floor. 15, 26. We're not at six. The Salukis of Southern Illinois and Rick Heron will be on the road against Southwest Missouri State. And then following that, it'll be Southern against Mississippi Valley State. The winner goes to the NCAA tournament, the SWAC championship game. Still plenty of time left here in the first half. The Dayton Flyers, as the Flyers and Xavier Musketeers tied at six. Well, this is just a great move. You see the left-hander drive in the lane. Draws the defense and kicks it over for the dunk. That's what coaches love to see, that kind of penetration. We talked about Aaron Williams, the importance of him getting off to a good start. He's got four right now. There are times when he can take over a game, times when he just plain disappears. This is Williams here. With the rebound. It looks like Xavier's going to go to him and try to get him involved in the game. That's a good idea, a good game plan by Pete Gillen. Air tries to muscle it up there. Grant with the rebound. Half-court level, Dayton is having trouble figuring out what to do against the defense. Excellent defense at the half-court level. Jamie Gladden with the three, and Xavier with their biggest lead of the afternoon at three. Gladden has five. Williams has four. That takes care of the Xavier scoring. Scrutches for two. Williams with another rebound. Well, Xavier's just given them the three-on-two situation. That's a great scoring opportunity, and Scrutchins has to take that shot. Gladden gets another chance. Dishes off to Grant. Grant's a strong rebounder. That's about the maximum range that he shoots the ball, but that's a good face-up shot. Grant had knee surgery before the new year, and Pete Gillen says he's healthy. And the problem is, in his mind, he doesn't feel he is, and he's still a little tentative with the knee. And he led the conference in rebounding last year as a freshman, and he's better than that this year. You wonder what he could be like if he's been healthy the whole time. Andy Gaydosh comes in. West Coffee sits down. Gaydosh in there to bang on some people. Well, Gaydosh leads Dayton in rebounds per minute. So he's one of those players who does come in. He doesn't play a lot of minutes, but he gets a lot done in the minutes that he plays. Dayton's having trouble getting shots against the half-court defense. The full-court defense is not giving them nearly as much trouble as the half-court defense today, which is surprising. Dukes had the jumper, decided to go a little closer, and he traveled on the play. Second time he's been whistled for traveling. Xavier's defense has confused them the last couple of times down the floor. Well, I think it's just good defense. They're, they're playing great position. They're getting they excellent they pressure on the perimeter. And yeah. while, again, Dayton doesn't look to shoot the threes as much as they have in past years, everybody on this team has made a three-point shot during the course of the year. That's a very unusual statistic. So they can shoot the ball from there. Xavier's just not giving them any room right now. They're probably going to have to start throwing the ball into the post and then kicking it back out. 
Dayton with 176 threes this year. Xavier coming in with 92. Williams, the follow-up. And he gets the friendly roll, and Aaron Williams Aaron has Williams. definitely appeared in this game. Well, he was checked out, man. The amazing thing about it, he just went up and got the basketball and then put it back in. There's an example of a man who normally doesn't handle a basketball having to handle it against this press. They've got to catch the ball and get it to one of those guards as quickly as they possibly can. Back in line at the day, number 52. West Coffee, Coffee back in. Chip Harris is down. Jim O'Brien yesterday kept saying, we have got to put these guys on the floor. We have got to make it a physical game because they're better inside than us. They jump better than we do. And if we don't box them out, it's going to be a long day. And right now it is. They're down by seven. The backdoor cut. Hawkins can't get it to go. Grant with the follow-up. Gaydosh got a piece of it, and West Coffee controls. Richter looks inside the coffee, decides to bring it back out to Derek Dukes. The referee's definitely letting him play. Well, they are. It's a physical game at both ends of the floor. Both teams are playing hard, but you like to see this. Coffee. That's, they didn't. That's okay. I think they've got to throw it in there. That's exactly what they've got to do to release some of this pressure because... It is very physical on the perimeter, too. And if you do this, you force the defense to collapse. You can see how many people he draws down there. Wes Coffey doing a good job of taking his time down there. Xavier on a 7 nothing run. That's over the last three and a half minutes. And this has been a problem for the Flyers this year, Terry, is they've had these spurts where there's no offense whatsoever. And keep in mind, they are playing without Chip Jones, a guy who was averaging over 22 points a game when he was declared academically ineligible. So they've got to find other go-to guys. Sean Scrutchins with the miss. Hare tried to keep it alive. Well, that's going to be over the back. But again, you want to be aggressive on the boards, particularly playing at home. You've got to go after the ball like that. That's his Flyers down by seven. And Jim O'Brien wants to talk it over. We'll be back. Updating the Big Ten from East Lansing, Michigan State, Ohio State, Matt Stegingen not dressing today, a stress fracture in his foot. So the Buckeyes pounded inside, Big Lawrence Thunderbird, the dunk and the foul, the Buckeyes up six. Back to Dan and Terry and Dayton. Welcome back to the UD Arena, Dan Patrick along with Terry Holland and after all it is leap day, the Bud Light Daredevils entertaining the sold out UD Arena. The Flyers in trouble right now, down by seven. Those guys are impressive, Dan. I wanted to go out and recruit some of them. <laughs> Neither team's shooting well, but Xavier's controlled the boards. They've got 11 rebounds to just six for the Flyers. This is a lineup that Xavier uses quite a bit. They've actually got three small guards in the lineup with the two big guys inside. Dwayne Wilson with the follow. And one of the assistant coaches said yesterday, he said, if it gets physical, Wilson will come into the game for Xavier. Here he is. I guess Pete Gillen has decided that this is a physical game. They're going to get Robertson with the travel, and he has yet to get on track. Two fouls, and also with the turnover. Some of the other scores, Texas right now leading Baylor. James Madison having a good year. Lefty Drizel in Wichita State leading Drake in the second half. Our score here, 13 to 6, Xavier. Alex Robertson had a great game against Xavier down there. They need to get him on track. And again, I think they're going to have to probably throw the ball inside, not necessarily to shoot it in there, but to collapse his defense because Xavier is doing a great job on the perimeter right now. You got a mismatch. Gentry on Chip Hare, and they've got to find a way to take advantage and didn't get a chance to do it before they switch back. Robertson goes inside. They're going to get Wilson over the back of Robertson. Good job by Dayton to get him the basketball right now and get him involved in the game. He can move with the ball. He's a good player who can do a lot of different things. This is an excellent move. Third. Sets it up with the dribble to the left and then comes back hard to the right. Williams in the lineup for Xavier, along with number 34, Tyrese Walker. 
And you get a chance to see what it looks like if you have to guard him when he's coming to the basket like that. Good job of getting his feet under him and going up strong. Stays with the shot. You'd like to get three out of that. I'm sure that's what Jim O'Brien wanted. It's been so long since they've scored. Great kid. Not the prettiest of shots, but he does it in a lot of different categories. Well, he's, you know, he's done a great job of taking the basketball away from other teams. He has 77 steals. And to give you an idea of what that's like, the, the whole Xavier team does a great job of pressing, but the most an individual for them has is 32. So he's got over twice as many as any player on a team that presses and makes their living essentially taking the ball away from other teams. So he does a great job as an individual of taking the ball away from the other team. That free throw broke a scoring drought of five minutes for the Flyers. The trail by six. Wilson once again inside to Williams. And Aaron Williams having a tremendous first half. Well, good job by, by Xavier to go to him and force him to get into the game because when he's played well, they played well as a team. Williams had 22 in the first meeting between these two to go along with Gladden's 28. You've got 50 there. Chip Hare can't get it to go. Well, the, the Xavier size inside definitely bothering Dayton. I don't think there's any doubt about that. They've got to make shots like that. Those shots in tight, they need to put them in the basket. They've had the scoring drought. They're going inside. That's the right they thing to do. They've got to relieve that pressure on the perimeter, but they've got to make those shots. Scrunchins with the foul. Team foul number five of the Flyers. McCourt Sheehan comes in for less coffee as Jim O'Brien continues to search for a lineup that'll work. Williams with eight to lead the Musketeers. They're going to get Chip Hare with the body down low. Well, again, they are battling down there. And, you know, when those two guys go at each other, it's hard to decide exactly who's committing the foul. Team six. Xavier leading the Flyers at the UD Arena, a sold-out UD Arena. Dan Patrick along with the former Virginia Cavalier coach, Terry Holland. Glad you could join us. Two more basketball games coming up later on this afternoon. Gladden, who's been a little bit quiet, changes all of that. Basket by Jamie Gladden. Gladden with six. You can't give him much room. He is an excellent shooter. He can shoot it up to three-point range. Puts it on the floor as well, so he's tough to defend. Scrutchins. Williams with another rebound. The Flyers find themselves down by ten. Richter draws the charge. That's a big play because by drawing the charge, he's able to prevent the basket, and they have the numbers. Great job by Richter holding position after the pass off. It's definitely two points going the other way if he doesn't draw the charge. Pete Gillen obviously saw this team and didn't think Dave had enough ball handlers to beat his press because he has attacked everybody, and Derek Dukes is probably their best ball handler, but he can't control it all the time. They've really been going after the other guys. Well, one of the things that last time you saw, when Dukes penetrated and kicked it out, they got a great shot, but when they missed the shot with Dukes inside, it was 3-on-2 going the other way. Somebody's got to rotate back and help out on defense. Scratchens was all alone for the moment. They tried to lob into Chip Hare. Grant breaks that up. Hawkins, the ball is stolen by Derek Dukes. Good job by Derek for directing traffic out there. He needed some help or that would have been a double dribble. Hair inside. not buy a bunny. Well, even though they're missing those shots, I think they have to continue to go in there because if nothing else, maybe they can get Aaron Williams out of the game. In the lineup for Xavier, number 54, Larry Sykes. Larry Sykes checks in, and Aaron Williams sits down. That's about the only way Dayton can stop him is put him on the bench. Richter comes up short on the three. 
Well, Richter's one of those unusual players who shoots better from three-point range than he does from two-point range, so you're glad to see him taking that three-pointer. The Flyers had all five starters back this year, but with Chip Jones plucking out of school, they have been hard-pressed to come up with a score. Well, it takes a while to adjust to something like that. You spend your whole preseason figuring out how you're going to use a guy like Chip Jones and how the pieces fit around him. And all of a sudden, he's out of the lineup. And I think that's what you're seeing. You're seeing a very young team that's starting now to gel and starting to play darn good basketball. That was a great win over Notre Dame. It gives them a little uh, momentum coming into this game if they can find a way to win this game. Right now, they're not shooting the ball well, but they're getting good shots. I like the fact that they've got good inside shots. They're getting good shots from three-point range. They're just not going in the basket. give it to Xavier off the court Sheok. We have played nearly 12 minutes and Dayton has seven points. As Jim O'Brien continues to search for the missing puzzle. Or at least the piece of that. Right now it's been a complete puzzle. West Coffee checks in. Eight turnovers for the Flyers. Earlier they were having a tough time getting shots. So lately they've just been missing shots, Dan. So you've got to think as a coach that that will turn around. Keep getting the good shots, guys. Keep shooting. We thought they were letting them play. Now they've been calling just about everything inside. So maybe we spoke a little bit too early. Well, maybe they heard us. You're right. If you go inside now, you're probably going to get a foul call. That's a tough foul to call on McCourt Sheok. Almost incidental contact. Brian Gray at the line for Xavier. got hit in the face. Well, you have to hope he's all right because he certainly looks like he's hurt there and that's always a very painful injury. This is Sheok's final home game for the Flyers. The native of Sudan obviously in some pain and Jim O'Brien there to check on the poor Sheok. Well, you always worry about that because it's probably a finger in the eye and you know it's certainly not intentional. And reaching for the basketball there. Sure caught him right in the eye. That is a very painful injury. Jamie Gladden looked like he got him with the finger in the eye, and McCor is still down. He's been a remarkable story. He's 26 years of age. He's got four kids. He just had a child in February. He didn't bring his kids to the game. His wife is here as they played the Sudanese national anthem. Well, he's only been playing basketball for five years, and you think about what he would be like had he had a chance to grow up like these other youngsters, playing basketball from eight years old on up. He worked very hard this summer, gained weight, gained strength, and has had a good year. He's been averaging double figures for this team. Has not been starting in recent games. Wes Coffey's gone back into the starting lineup with Chip Hare, but he's had an excellent season. Jim O'Brien trying to regroup, talking things over while McCor Sheok still lying on the Dayton Arena floor. He's ready to get up. The Flyers still down by 10. The question is, can they get back up? Still only seven. Five, four, three, two, one. And we are underway. Oh! Oh, showtime promise. Three again. He hits. to the flyer locker room as he took a finger in the eye. And all those injuries are painful, Dan. A lot of times you're able to come right back out and play, so we hope he will be back this last home game. All right, you being the former coach, what's Jim O'Brien telling his kids? Is he saying, we're getting good shots, they're just not dropping, don't press the issue? Yeah, and I think one of the problems is they've turned the ball over eight times, and a lot of those turnovers have not been steals. They've been mainly travels, just a little bit of a rush, uh, not handling the basketball properly, and they're 2 for 11 18%. Uh, you know, they're not playing that bad a basketball game if they just settle down a little bit and continue to take the shots. I think right now they're getting good shots. 
as these coaches know, if they're going to make the NCAAs, they've got to win the season-ending tournament. Pete Gillen said that last night. He said, even if we win our last couple of games, win a couple of the tournament, they're not going to take us because we haven't defeated anybody that powerful this year. Well, the three-point shots can make it up very quickly. And Michael Hawkins comes back and makes the Flyers pay for it. Act in the act, and looks like it's going to be on Chip Hare. Well, Hawkins has just continued to improve this year. He's aggressive with the basketball. In the last game, he had 11 assists and zero turnovers. He's now got a, an assist-to-turnover ratio of over 2-1, to one, and that's what you like to see from a point guard. So I know Pete Gillen is very pleased with his progress. In fact, the two top newcomers in the MCC are in this game, Chip Hare and Michael Hawkins. Hawkins, a freshman out of Canton, Ohio. They thought that was the weak point of this team coming in this year. They needed a point guard. They lost Jamal Walker who graduated last year, and he ran the show. So they've been splitting time with Gentry and Hawkins looking for the right person, and Hawkins seems to be that guy. Well, he's going to be a good one. He's been a little bit up and down as a freshman. He's now the second assist man in the conference. He's starting to come into his own at this time of the year. Derek Dukes. He buries it over Hawkins, and both teams starting to shoot a little bit better. Well, now Dayton's got to play defense. They can't. They got the three last time. They came right back and gave up a three-point play to Hawkins. They've got to play defense now and stop them. Aaron Williams set to check in for Xavier. Gladden. That's way too much room for him, and it's tough. They're screening down for him. They're trying to chase out, but you've got to get there a lot quicker than that. At least make him put the ball on the floor. Gladden's one of those players, you'll look at the end of the game and say he had that many. He's got ten already. Xavier with their biggest lead. They're up by 11 inside seven minutes to play. Tough pass for Coffee to handle. And here comes Xavier again. Coffee was working for position, just wasn't quite there. That pass got there before he was ready to receive it. Well, I think you could have taken your pick on what to call. Either maybe a reach in or a little push or how about traveling, which is what they did call. Larry Sykes is a big freshman, and again, I think they're going to get Aaron Williams back in there, but Larry Sykes is going to be an excellent player as well. Sykes' his nickname is Bear, and if you see him up close, you realize why they call him that. He's just a freshman as well. Very young teams for both Dayton and Xavier. As you say, both of these teams would have to win the tournament to get into the NCAA field. But both of them are capable of doing that. And what they need to do is get a little bit of a winning streak going and go into the conference tournament playing with confidence. Dukes can't make it two in a row, and this is Gentry at the other end. Grant traveled on the flight. The entry passes. Pete Gillen has to be happy because he's getting what he wanted. His big guys down on the blocks. Well, they're, they're putting it in there, and they're doing it even from the high post, even though they're sagging off trying to help out when it does go to the high post. They can't sag off with Gladden and those kids because they just shoot the ball so well. Dukes. Williams got a piece of it. Coffee on the putback. They finally got one to drop inside. But credit Williams with his second block of the afternoon. Wes Coffey doing a good job defensively, trying to draw the charge on Brian Grant coming down the floor that time. Latin Stretchens with the rebound. He's got Davos all alone. Alex Robertson. Gentry, one on one. They're going to get Stretchens with the foul. Well, you get the feeling that Dayton's just right there, ready to take advantage of a situation, and the ball just won't go in the basket for him. Dayton foul number 34. This is a great angle because you get a chance to see what it'd be like to try to guard a guy. A great crossover dribble by Gentry. Sets it up nicely, takes it hard to the basket. All you can do is foul him or give him the basket. Steve Gentry at the line for Xavier 
freshman in the game for Dayton, Chris Daniels, who I think is going to be an excellent player, number 33. He'll be playing mostly inside. Gentry is from Withrow High School, which is one of the better high schools in Cincinnati. They produced the likes of Louis Orr to the pros. Also, Ricky Callaway went to Indiana. Gentry misses both of them. The Flyers down by nine as we head for the five-minute mark. A restless UD crowd. Duke's inside. Still can't get it to go. It's tough for the little guy when you know you've got all those shot blockers around. Tyrese Walker, their best leaper, does exactly that. Jumping over scrutches his first two of the afternoon. Xavier has backed off the zone press, and now they're getting back and matching up, playing much more solid defense, not giving up those three-on-two situations. Gentry almost with a steal. Dukes makes him pay for it. Perry Dukes. Flyers down by nine. Dukes with six. And that is six of 16. The Flyers trying to shoot a little better than 20% in the first half. This is Walker again. That is Walker. And they stretch you out so much when you've got shooters like Gladden and Gentry out there. It stretches the defense and gives Walker uh, room to go to the basket. Robertson lost it out of bounds, but they're going to whistle a foul. Well, this is what Alex Robertson does. He takes the ball to the basket. In open court situations, he's very effective, and that's why last time when Xavier was pressing him, he was able to get it in those open court situations and take advantage of his ability to dribble the basketball. Some of the other scores from around the country. Flyers right now down by 11. Well, maybe we're not going to show you those scores. How about those out-of-town scores? There we go. The Buckeyes leading in East Lansing. Can ill afford another loss in the Big Ten play if they hope to catch the Hoosiers. We got a timeout on the floor. Pete Gillen's Xavier Musketeers lead by nine. We not only have a basketball triple header, but round out your evening tonight with our American Cup coverage, which continues. Defenders prepare for round robin number three. How about a bright spot for the Flyers, Terry? Well, again, I think the penetration is what's helping them. You get the penetration, you get a chance to get to the offensive boards because the big guy has to rotate over. But unfortunately, they're given penetration at the other end. And you see all the room that Walker had that time to drive the ball to the basket. If they could get that much room for Alex Robertson, he would be very effective taking the ball to the goal. Inside four minutes in the first half, Williams once again. Looks like Richter not only fouled him, but got smacked back by Aaron Williams. Well, they're trying to help out inside so much. You can see everybody's on one side of the floor. Very good job by Brian Grant to find that Williams on the opposite side of the floor. And, of course, they come over to try to help out. But all you can do there is foul. And that's the second time Rutgers got hit with the ball. He got hit in the pregame warm-ups. I just happened to be looking at it, and Sean Scrutchins threw him a pass, and he wasn't looking and really hit him hard. Williams with eight. Well, they finally did something wrong this afternoon. They call him the A train. Michael Hawkins back in the Musketeers. Well, he's got all the talent in the world, and he's had some great games. And I know Pete Gillen, and I know Aaron himself, want to develop that consistency. This is both of them. McCourt Sheok is still in the Dayton Flyers locker room having his eye looked at. Al Sicard checking in for the Flyers, trying to help out with some of the ball handling duties. Robertson 
Can't get the three to go. Chris Daniels keeps it alive. West Coffee credit for keeping it alive first, and Chris Daniels comes up with the basket. I know one thing they'd like to see from Chris Daniels is a little more physical play. He's a freshman, and he's not used to the kind of banging that goes in a, a game of this emotional level. I'm going to call the offensive foul on Tyrese Walker. I'll give West Coffee credit for helping out on that. Great job of moving his feet, getting over there, yeah, sealing the baseline, and just holds position. A little bit of an acting job, too. He got hit pretty hard, but not quite that hard. and gives a little bit extra to get to the free throw line. Coffee's had his problems shooting from the line. 58% on the year. He has one three on the year, and that was the biggest three of the year for him and perhaps for Dayton because it came against Notre Dame. And as they pulled that game out here at home earlier in the week, and that loss may have ruined Notre Dame's chances for a tournament first, although Jim Balvano put them on his bubble. He said the teams they've defeated, they deserve to have a chance. Well, they have, they've played a tremendously tough schedule, but they're going to have to get some more wins to really have a chance at an NCAA bid. West Coffee had 12 points in that game. He's also an artist, a very accomplished artist. And he's improved his free throw shooting sometimes. <laughs> He has tremendous skills for a seven-footer, but there are times when Coach O'Brien wants him to do more, but sometimes he is not able to step up and take the challenge. He gets both of them, and the Flyers are to within five. We're inside three minutes as the UD Arena comes alive. Gladden to Aaron Williams. Well, that was a good pass by Gladden. Once he got inside the defense and forced you to rotate, you're in trouble because you're outnumbered on the boards. Good job. He gets inside. He draws the help from Coffee, and it's very difficult to make those all those rotations. You can make the first one to stop the penetration. I think we're going to check that out on the town scoreboard again. Maurice Bradley replacing number 34, Tyrese Walker. We promise we deliver. The Spiders, Dick Karen leading Lefty Brazil. Second half, Wichita State by 13. Williams finally hits a free throw. When he visited Xavier, Pete Gillen said we didn't know if he could talk, that he didn't say a word. A very quiet young man, but he lets his playing speak for himself rather than talking about the game. Dukes loses control. Robertson with what he's famous for, the steal. Sean Scrutchins can't buy the three, and Williams with another rebound. Xavier by six, despite the Flyers shooting 30% in the first half. They're going to get Dukes and the body on Gladden. Gladden presents all sorts of problems for you. Coming up at halftime, the pride of Boulder, Colorado, Chris Fowler. Highlights of the Buckeyes in Michigan State and Richmond and James Madison. The Richmond James Madison game is a big one in the Colonial. And James Madison beat them badly at Richmond. And now Richmond leading James Madison at James Madison. is an 80 plus percent free throw shooter and sometimes it's like a virus it moves all around the team when someone starts missing then everybody even your best free throw shooter start to miss Dwayne Wilson checks back in Aaron Williams will sit down uh, Williams has two fouls and of course Gillen doesn't want to pick up that last one they're in control of the game. They lead by seven. Two minutes left in the half. Let's don't pick up a stupid foul here at the end of the half. They almost could have called Robertson for traveling on that play. The turnover once again. Gladden at the other end. The pull-up jumper, and he finally misses. Scrutchins. Foul on Gladden. 
again, being aggressive will get you to the free throw line. I, I like the fact that Dayton's aggressive. They, they have turned the ball over too much. They've gotten in a little bit of too much of a rush at times, but that time, Scrutchins caught the ball, turned and faced, got his feet under him, didn't travel with it, and threw the foul. Gladden sits down with three. And after he reached in on stretches, he almost tried to hide in the crowd so they wouldn't call his third. Well, back in the old days, you'd have someone else raise their hand real quickly and hope they'd call it on them rather than on your best score. Stretches with five. And when you think about the way this game is going, if you're Jim O'Brien, you've got to feel pretty good if you can get in at halftime only down by six or seven points. They trail by five. We're inside two minutes to go. Well, that was a big basket because there were some good defensive plays made that time by Dayton. The Gentry managed to put it back in for the two to go up by seven again. Scrutches. I'm not sure if it was a shot or a pass, but either way, it's Xavier's basketball. And Scrutches thought he got fouled, and I probably have to agree with him. with a rebound. Got a minute to play. The Flyers trying to make this respectable in the first half to get it down to maybe within three or five. Dukes. Make by five. He used the screen two or three different times there. Finally got himself open and said, I've got to take this one. Dukes with eight and 35 seconds to go. it alive. Brantley again, and they're going to call it back to the act, and it counts. Once I again, the Dayton, offensive boards. I thought Dayton did a great job that time of saying, look, we're not going to let you take the last shot. We're going to gamble. We're going to make you do something. They force Brantley inside, but as you say, they give up the offensive rebound, and they foul on it too. A three-point play right here at this stage of the game when it looked like they had a good chance to come up with a basketball. They forced Brantley to drive the baseline, did a good job of stopping him first, but he finally came up with a rebound. Brantley can't complete the three-point play. Flyers down by 7, 20 seconds to go. Scrutchins brings it back out. Robertson had better hurry. He did a great job of moving his feet, but he reached in with his hands. Hawkins and Gentry give you all sorts of problems out there on the perimeter. That was just great defense, and if he hadn't have reached in and bailed it out, Robertson was going to have trouble getting the shot out of it. Robertson with a chance to pull his flyers to within five with 2.4 seconds left, to be specific. Chris Fowler coming up at halftime, scores and highlights back in our studio. Alex only shoots in the low 60s, but I've got a feeling he's the kind of player that goes to the line and with the pressure on like this tends to make them. Right on cue. Had a 50-50 chance there. Going to make any other predictions? <laughs> How about two in a row? He's Richter comes in. Robertson sits down. Hawkins. He went in but will not count. They blew it in before it released it. Let's take a look at Michael Hawkins again. That was awfully close. They moved that ball a long way. Just barely. He's 
started his shooting motion, but it wasn't out of his hands. The Flyers head to the locker room. They trail by five. They trailed by as many as 11. Chris Fowler, Bacon. All right, Dan, thank you. So, Xavier, an aggressive first half. They're up by five points. Ohio State, Michigan State highlights coming up. Also, Baylor in Texas and a battle down to the final seconds for first place in the Colonial. Don't go away. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover how substance is taking shape Cadillac style. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. And hey, welcome back. Xavier up at halftime, the first of three today on Leap Day. Now to the scoreboard, Ohio State and Michigan State in East Lansing. The Buckeyes can't afford another loss if they want to catch the Hoosiers. Matt Steginga, stress fracture in the foot, not dressing today for Michigan State. They've had good success against the Buckeyes at home, though, in recent years. Mark Montgomery draws Jen. This is to Popowski for the jam. At the other end, Funderburg working inside with Steginga out. Gets a nice speed, the slam and the foul. Buckeyes up early. Then, Jimmy Jackson. J.J. with the J in the lane. Buckeyes build a slim four-point lead in the first half. And then John Zula inside to Poplowski. The hoop and the foul. Yes, says Poplowski. The big guy pumped up. Poplowski and Wyshynski and Zula. Michigan State, like for once, his favorite team. But they're down by eight points at halftime to the Buckeyes, 42-34. Southwest Conference. Texas has really been playing well lately. They're definitely in the NCAA tournament with Dexter Cambridge coming back. They take on Baylor today, a team they figure to handle pretty easily in Austin. Let's check out the first half highlights on this one. Albert Burdett rejecting Joey Fatter right there inside. And then B.J. Tyler, the Texas guard, the up fake, drives in the lane, pops in the jumper. Then Tyler spots up with a deep three. He had eight points in the first eight minutes for Tom Penders. Then Tony Watson. He's open for the three. Baylor got to get out of that zone right there. Texas had a 12-point lead at halftime, 41-29, as they try for their 20th season. Yet another 20-win season in the works for Tom Penders and company. We'll come back with highlights. A great finish in that James Madison-Richmond game for first place in the Colonial. But as we go to break, check out the rest of the top 25 schedule later on today. Arizona, 11-1 in the last 12. Still a chance for the Pac-10 title. Still a chance for the number one seed out west if they win this game and then a couple in L.A. Welcome back. A battle for first place in the top seat in the Colonial Conference this afternoon. James Madison coming in with an 11-1 record, hosting Richmond. The Spiders 11-2 in the conference coming into today's game. This was a thriller down to the final couple of seconds. JMU by three at halftime because of plays like this. Brian Edwards to Troy Bostic for the hoop and the foul. The back comes Richmond. Down two in the second half. Curtis Blair drives, misses, gets it back, ties the game at 40. Now it's 50-49. to 49. JMU by one. Brian Edwards finds William Davis. Nice little hook shot in the lane. They're up 52-49. Now two seconds to go. JMU down three. Going for the tie. And Brian Edwards so deep the cameraman couldn't see him. Tries the three-pointer. He misses in the final seconds. And Richmond holds on. They've won seven in a row. And they clinch the top seed going into the Colonial Conference Tournament. 69-66 is the final. Blair, a great game. He had 27 points. In the Metro Conference, South Florida's been playing good basketball, and they have a chance for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. Some quality wins lately, but they're struggling with VCU, only up by four points at halftime right now. In the ACC, the early going, Virginia, a seven-point lead over Clemson, 20-13, 7-10 to go in the first half. Both those teams are thinking NIT, unless they can somehow win the ACC tournament. Reminder, game two, we'll switch it out to the Missouri Valley Conference. Southern Illinois, the first place team in the conference take it on the bears of southwest missouri straight they are working on an 11 game win streak that follows our second half here then the first ncaa tournament bid up for grad in the swack championship game from baton rouge it is southern against mississippi valley state they are the top seed coming in as we check the brackets in the semifinals some struggles in the semifinal game mississippi valley state just a four-point win over the fifth seed, Alcorn State. And Southern, in a wild game, a four-point win over Texas Southern. Southern does love to get up and pound the floor, and that game comes along at about 5 o'clock Eastern time, the first of the 64 bids. Princeton lost last night. They could have had it. Now the honor goes to the SWAC titleist. We're going to come back with more halftime. Don't forget Xavier and Dayton, the second 20 minutes upcoming. 
Steve Gentry finding Aaron Williams for the slam, and the Musketeers have a five-point lead at halftime. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team, and by the people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. Welcome back to the UD Arena. Dan Patrick along with Terry Holland. And if it could go wrong in the first half, it did go wrong for the Flyers. But there was at least one shining moment. Well, Dayton actually came back pretty well. Anytime you get penetration, even if the shot is blocked, it gives you a chance to get on the offensive glass. This is one of the few offensive rebounds that Dayton was able to get. At the other end of the floor, you see the penetration by Gentry, who really does a good job with the crossovers, getting inside, and what a pass here to Aaron Williams. Look at the stats. What's the one that jumps out at you? Well, of course, shooting percentage for Dayton is low, but the free throw percentage for Xavier is exactly what's allowed UD to stay in this game. Too many turnovers for Dayton. 13 is too many. A lot of those have been unforced. Jamie Gladden with 11. Dare I say a quiet 11, but that's the way he does it. Aaron Williams has been a force on both ends of the glass. Derek Dukes, Alex Robertson with eight apiece. Flyers with the ball and trying to get a little quicker start than they did in the first half, and they do. Sean Strutchin brings the Flyers to within three, the closest they've been in about ten minutes. And Sean Strutchin was recruited as a point guard. You called him a linebacker, and that's what he looked like that time, taking the hit and still hanging in the air to make the basket. with the deflection it'll stay Xavier's basketball yeah, that was a good job by Wes Coffey to get over and knock that ball away because it was going to be a basket inside the ground Jim O'Brien is third year at the helm for the Dayton Flyers 14 and 13 on the year and Ryan Grant once again the inside play well, that's why you don't want it to get in there that's why Wes Coffey's deflection on the play before was so important Williams with another rebound. Grant inside again. Hare controls the loose ball and Alex Robertson to stretches. That's that third foul on Aaron Williams, and with Gladden and Williams both with three, you've got to think that if they keeps playing aggressively, that's going to take its toll. Dayton was only one of eight from three-point range in that first half. They just have not been able to hit the outside shot at all, and of course, that makes it a little easier for Xavier to defend the inside. A year ago, they had Norm Grevy, who was one of the finest three-point shooters in the country. They also had Chip Jones. But this year, they have still looked for that outside shooter and not been able to find him. John Richter, normally a very good outside shooter, has not been able to fill that role. So Jim O'Brien is still trying to find somebody who he can go to when he needs points. Xavier was 3 of 11 at that end, and that now makes it 3 of 13 at that particular end of the floor. Maybe there's something wrong with that basket when you're at the free throw line. West Coffee with the rebound. Flyers trail by five, and this is Robertson for three. It'll stay Xavier's basketball in the possession era. Well, the Dayton coaches said that he was a good defender, and this really is an excellent job here. Good recovery after helping out. Stays with Williams on the dribble. Williams exposes the ball. He says, I'll take it. Well, I think 
think they're fired up defensively because that's an excellent job of keeping them from being able to get the ball in, in bounds. I walked by the Dayton locker room at a halftime, and there are a few words in there I don't think you can say on TV. The turnover, Michael Hawkins. The great entry pass to Brian Grant. Grant was six. Those turnovers really hurt because they're in the open court and they give Xavier a chance to do something at the other end of the floor like they did. Get a mismatch and kick it inside to Grant. Scratches to Coffee and they'll get Tyrese Walker with the block. The Flyers pulled it within three, but now it's back up to seven. Well, again, good penetration, and when you penetrate and force a rotation, and you can see the foul there. Well, again, that's, that's just a good job. Once you get inside the defense and force the rotation, you, you get yourself a good scoring opportunity. Coffee in his final home game. Four points on the afternoon. That's three for 14 at this end, Dan. We're going to have to do something about that basket. <laughs> Williams wanted it down low and may have had position on West Coffee. Split second, didn't get the ball and shot clock down to 15. Williams got it there. Stretches with the steal. Derek Nukes. Alex Robertson kept it alive, and they're gonna keep it Dayton's way. Well, Dayton did a great job defensively at the other end there, and they just threw it up in the air to Williams, who went and got it. There's not much you can do about that. He just elevated and came up with the basketball. This place is just ready to explode. They just need something to cheer about. Over 13,000 on hand. This is the 131st consecutive home game. They've had at least 10,000 fans. Robertson can't get it to go. Well, the fact that they're not making perimeter shots means that there's not a lot of room for Robertson to take it to the basket. That time he really drew a crowd. There were already people waiting on him. He just found a way to get to the opposite side of the basket to get the shot off, rebounded his own shot, and then didn't draw the foul. But he's not going to get free throws out of this. Foul was on Brian Grant, only his first. Gladden and Williams are in trouble. Chip Hare can't hit the three, and Gladden with the rebound. Someone might say, well, what's Chip Hare, 6'10", 250 pounds, doing out shooting the three-point shot? But he was one for 15 early in the year, and since then has shot almost 50% from three-point range. He's an excellent shooter. He struggled today. In the last six games, he's averaged 15 points. Gladden. A rare miss by him. Tyrese Walker with the put back, and they're going to get Derek Dukes. That'll be his third. Foul starting to mount up for both teams now. They have foul number 12, Derek Dukes. That's his third, team second. You can see the battle in there. Tyrese Walker, a great job of beating the check out. Got inside position himself and just held position until he could come up with the basketball. Walker was the Ohio High School Player of the Year in 1990. Maybe their most versatile player. Maybe their best athlete. He does just a little bit of everything. A tremendous leaper. Xavier with a seven-point lead. and he decided not to go up with it and Gladden to Walker. Ooh, two big mistakes at both ends. The seven-footer's got to shoot the ball that close to the basket. Well, it didn't hurt the Flyers. 
15.52 to play. Flyers down by seven. In Baton Rouge, LSU trying to beat Alabama for a fifth straight time, but in the early going, Shaq rejected by Robert Ory. We'll not see that happen very often. That would just get him mad, though. It was the Tigers who come back for a three-point lead. Back to Dan and Terry. Xavier leading it by seven. The Flyers hit their first shot of the second half, but they missed the next six. Well, when the seven-footer gets the ball in the lane like this, he can't keep pumping. He's got to go ahead and take the shot. Now, this is a perfect example of overpassing. Glad to just go ahead and lay the ball in the basket. Anytime you don't have to throw a pass, there's no need to. It's being unselfish, I know it seems like it, but there's no sense in taking a chance on turnover. You get a turnover there and a, off of the, what should have been an easy basket. Flyers still hanging around, down by seven. Xavier showing zone this time. They're going to say, well, can you shoot the ball outside? Robertson says, wow, I'm going to take it to the basket. Latin. I'm going to get coffee over the back of Tyrese Walker. Well, again, the penetration at this end ended up with an outnumbered situation going the other way, and they've got to do a better job, Dayton does, of rotating back to protect against that. Team third. Flyers were concerned about Xavier's transition game. They're just so good when they get out on the break, particularly this guy here, Jamie Gladden. 11 in the first half, looking for his first two here in the second half. Derek Dukes with a steal. That was a great play, and you know, he made one early in the game for that first basket to anticipation play. for three. Williams with another rebound. Robertson to steal. And Hawkins took it back. That sequence kind of epitomizes Dayton's afternoon, Terry. Yeah, Wes Coffey was not looking. Turned quickly before he really had control of the basketball and Hawkins took advantage of it. Great play by Hawkins. yet to score. The Dayton's having such a terrible day shooting the basketball. You wonder if they're just going to become tentative and be afraid to throw them up. They're really hitting the front of the rim with those shots right now. Another turnover. Gladden for three. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Jamie Gladden, and this thing could get ugly if the Flyers don't hit a hoop soon. Jim O'Brien wants to call a timeout, give credit to Xavier. They have played great defense. Right now, Pete Gillen's club leads by 12. Still plenty of time left. Plenty of basketball coming up tomorrow afternoon as we bring you the... ACC shootout. It's North Carolina against Maryland, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, live here on ESPN. Even when something goes right for the Flyers, it ends up wrong. Well, this is classic reversal basketball. Xavier's got the ball. Nope, I'm sorry. Dayton's got the ball. Nope, wrong. Xavier's got the ball, and Michael Hawkins lays it in the basket. UD shooting 11% in the second half. Xavier at 50%. Dayton came out, got that first basket, cut it to 33-30, and you think, well, gee, this is uh, going to be one heck of a basketball game. They're probably going to trade baskets the rest of the half. They've only managed one free throw since then. Dukes loses it out of bounds. It'll be Xavier's basketball, and some heads starting to hang for the Flyers. Well, when you're not shooting the ball well, what happens is you try to get a little closer to the basket. You try to do something a little differently. And They've tried to shoot it. Uh, they just can't get the ball to go outside, particularly from three-point range. They've gotten great shots. Gladden double team. Duke's got a hand on it. As the Flyers try to pick up the tempo, Hawkins for three. So close to coming up with the basketball, all of a sudden it shows up in Michael Hawkins' hands, and he hits the three, and instead of being down by 12, you're down by 15.
crutches. Walker with the rebound. The Flyers have had open shots all afternoon long. They just have not hit them. Well, give Pete Gillen some credit, too, because you know Jim O'Brien took that time out to talk about what they were going to do against the zone. So they came out. Xavier's playing man-to-man. Gladden. Grant. Uh, when Xavier gets play like they're getting from Grant and Williams today, they're awfully tough. They're going to be competitive with anyone in the country. And I think to, before they're through, these two players are going to remind people of Derek Strong and Tyrone Hill and the great teams that they have. Alex Robertson. Duke spots up for three, and they still can't hit one. Scrutchens. Chip Hare finally gets into the scoring column, and we've got 11.50 to go. Six minutes in between hoops for the Dayton Flyers. And that's why they find themselves down by 15. Gladden. What a tremendous shooter he is. What's happening is Dayton's trying to pick up the defense. They're gambling a little more, stretching out a little more on the perimeter. And that gives a player like Gladden some room to operate in. just so hard to get it to go in the basket. It was amazing they beat Notre Dame when you consider they were out-rebounded, out-shot from the floor, out-shot from the foul line, but still ended up winning. Williams inside. Acts in the act. Let's see if it counts. And you can see how hard they're working defensively. I mean, they really are working hard defensively, and you can see how they can stay in the game, even when they're shooting poorly. That's a tough foul to call, considering all the contact we've seen this afternoon. Well, I, I think Pete Gillen, though, has to like the way Aaron Williams is competing. I mean, he really stayed after that till he came up with it. Didn't, didn't get the basket, but drew the foul. Gentry misses the layup. says he's concerned about this team that he doesn't have a guy who's mean he says you need to have a villain out there somebody who's just going to be tough nasty he said we got nice kids well they, they get no senior leadership and sometimes that's what it takes a, you know a senior let guys know how important this game is chip hair into coffee coffee got smacked that time now, Wilson's in there to play physically, and uh, this is a great catch by Wes Coffey. I was impressed by that. That was not an easy play to make. Let's check that out-of-town scoreboard. What do you say? Uh -oh. Virginia? No problems with Clemson. Cowboys have struggled here lately, but winning right now easily over Iowa State. And the Longhorns in the second half, putting away Baylor. So when you see Virginia score up there, do you still get a little nervous? Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of players there that I ended up recruiting. So you, and Jeff Jones, of course, the coach, was a player that I recruited as well. Jim O'Brien wants to talk it over. Down by 15. 10, 15 to go. The Buckeyes are starting to pull away in East Lansing. Chris Wasinski has his pocket picked by Jimmy Jackson. The All-American goes coast to coast. 6.07 to play in the ball game. It's an 11-point lead for the Buckeyes. Back to Dan and Terry. Well, the Buckeyes pulling away, and so is Xavier. Pete Gillen looking for his 15th win of the season, leading the Flyers by 15. West Coffee at the line for Dayton. Well, the basic thing about it, Dan, you know, a couple of these three-pointers go, and all of a sudden it's nine. You make one more, and it's six. But, you know, they've got to go in the basket, and right now they're hitting the front of the rim almost every time Dayton attempts one. But they are getting good shots. I keep saying that, but... The ball doesn't go in the basket. You want to know why Xavier's leading by 14? Well, Jamie Gladden has had a, a big say in that. So is Aaron Williams. 
And of course, the Dayton shooting has a lot to do with it. But this do gives Xavier credit. Uh, you know, we tend to focus on the missed shots. It gives they, uh, Xavier credit for doing a great job, not only defensively, but scoring for themselves. Flyers down by 13, trying to pick up the tempo. Hawkins glides in and gets the friendly roll. Michael Hawkins. Dylan said you'll like Hawkins. Not really flashy, but very solid, and he's been there today. Back to the zone now for Xavier. Good job of changing the defenses. Chris Daniels gets poked in the eye. We just got word that McCourt Sheok will not come back. He was poked in the eye early in the first half. Well, again, that's not an uncommon basketball injury. But it really is a painful injury. I understand that, of course, Sheok is okay, though. They, they're really going to check him out carefully, but probably will not come back today. But they didn't see any reason to take him directly to the hospital. That He's going to stay and be here and hopefully cheer his teammates on. He's not on the bench, but he's in the locker room being examined. Kind of a shame, his final home game. Played the Sudanese national anthem and had his wife here. Didn't bring his four kids. Had a rough afternoon, but he's not alone. Scrutchins. You can see Dayton now doesn't want to take the perimeter shots. Scrutchins trying to get again a little closer to the basket. Richter, who's an excellent free throw shooter, was out there a wide open. Once he had the basketball, another time he was in position to receive the pass from Scrutchins. But again, right now they don't want to take the perimeter shot. They missed so many of them. There was a point in this game, Terry, when you said Dayton was attacking going to the hole. They have stopped doing that. They went to their outside shots, and that's when they started to get blown out. Well, actually, what happened, though, is Xavier started playing the inside and forcing them to take the perimeter shots. And that, you know, you've got to take what the defense gives you to a certain extent. Jamie Glenn and Aaron Williams back in the lineup for Xavier. And that infamous out-of-town scoreboard lurks again. The Gators getting beat by the Bulldogs at home. Tennessee, a team that Dayton lost to by two in the final seconds. Very controversial loss down at Tennessee. Black inside to Williams, who's basically been able to do whatever he wanted to inside. He's an impressive young man, and again, as he continues to improve, this team is going to continue to improve. His coach tried to kind of spark him a little bit by saying, do you realize how much money Tyrone Hill is making in the pros? 1.5 million. Do you think you're half as good as him? Aaron said yes. He said, you could be making 600, 700,000. Well, that's a good point. And it just, the point is, you need to work if you're going to accomplish that. And I'm sure he told him exactly how Tyrone Hill became the kind of player that he became. He said if Tyrone Hill, though, played against Aaron Williams, he'd throw him off the court. He's that kind of player, mean and nasty. He said if Aaron ever decides to be that kind of player, look out. Al Stickard. Back-to-back shots rejected, or at least Xavier's gotten a piece of both of them. Well, again, Dayton searching for an answer using Al Sicard here. He had a great preseason, was the best three-point shooter in practice, but hasn't been able to do it under game conditions. Flyers down by 17. Chip Hare. Tyrese Walker at the other end. The scoop to the hoop, and this one is getting ugly. The Flyers down by 19. Good timeout by Jim O'Brien. He needs to talk to his team right now and decide how to handle this. Pete Gillen taking off the glasses. Maybe he feels his work is done. His team leads comfortably. It's no longer just Monday. It's Big Monday on ESPN. Georgetown and St. John's as they battle for the Big East title. Oklahoma State at Kansas. And then after Sports Center, we take you out to New Mexico State. They hook up with Fresno State. The Xavier Musketeers, they've been able to do whatever they wanted to on both ends of the floor. Great outlet pass here. And of course, Tyrese Walker just hangs in the air, lets Wes Coffey go by and then puts it in the goal. Dayton's been outscored 6-zip in the last two and a half minutes. points in the whole second half. And two of those came very early in the half when they cut it to 
Gaydosh barely draws iron. Gladden tracks it down. And again, Jim O'Brien said, surely somebody sitting over here has a hot hand. Maybe I can find the right person to put in the game. Gladden put a little extra steam on that one to Aaron Williams. It'll be Dayton's basketball. Pete Gillen, a good look at him. When they had their tournament run last year, a lot of the comparisons to David Letterman and how he looks. I asked him last night if he'd go on Letterman. He said, nah. And I said, are you sure? He goes, well, if he asked. Well, you said it, it will help recruiting. <laughs> Pete Gillen is a recruiter supreme. He knows what it's all about. He said, oh, if it'll help recruiting, I'll be glad to go on David Letterman or anything else you want me to do. What a funny guy. Great, great spirit. And it rubs off on his kids. I can see why they're nice kids. Derek Dukes. Dukes gets the three stack. And they're down by 16. Now, if Xavier can hold on to this game and win it, it is a very important game for them. With only six teams in the Midwestern Conference, they end up Ryan with a bye in the first round, and that's important to them. Their two remaining games are at Notre Dame and then Butler at home. Of course, Notre Dame is not a conference game, but this would assure them for at least second place in the conference with the win today. Right now, they're tied with Evansville, but one of Evansville's better players just went down with surgery. Walker with the follow-up of his own shot. And you see that athletic ability, the ability to go right back up again. I mean, he came down and was right back up before the ball had a chance to even leave the, the rim area. Alex Robertson. Back-to-back -back threes as Dayton tries to breathe some new life into a stagnant game. right now is to make some of those threes, but they've got to play defense. The transition game, once again, the Flyers do not get back. Sealing off Tyrese Walker, who has 11. Robertson, who has 11. John Ricks are inside. Brian Grant tried to draw the charge. Flyers still trail by 15. Well, in the last minute and a half, Dayton scored as many points as they had in the whole half. But it's not making any difference because now with their pressure up court, they're giving up easy shots and having a foul at the other end of the court. The out-of-town scoreboard in Georgetown as they prepare for the big game with St. John's. St. John's tied with Notre Dame. Chris Daniels back in the lineup with Dayton. And DePaul. Having some problems with the Billikens. How many does Gladden have now? He, you're right. He is a very quiet player out there, but a very effective player. He's got 16. He's averaging 19, but quietly gets the points. If you walked into their practice as we did last night, you would have a hard time saying that is their best score. You just wouldn't see him emerging as that, but he finds a way to get his open shots very good in the transition game. He moves well without the basketball, too, and once he gets it in his hands, he's obviously very effective. He knows what to do with it. He can shoot it as well as put it on the floor and also pass as well. Alex Robertson. Strong move to the hole. Tyrese Walker with the reach in. If you think about it, the reason there was some room for Robertson to take the ball to the basket all of a sudden is because they made some three-point shots. And of course, right now, Xavier is interested in keeping them from shooting threes as they are. They don't mind giving up two. They just don't want to give up three. Xavier has only one scholarship available, and they have signed a kid out of Cleveland St. Ignatius who they think can come in and play right away. A very young squad. Tyrese Walker. And they've also got a player who transferred from Evansville, Chris Mack sitting out, who Pete Gillen told us would uh, have been a very important part of this year's team. So he'll be back next year having an anterior cruciate surgery. 
And again, you see Williams is really having the kind of day that Pete Gillum wants to see him have every time they take the court. And he's having it on the road, which is very impressive. He's got 13. John Richter with the three. Why is it left-handers are always so smooth? Aaron Williams just kind of reminds me of a left-handed Jamal Wilkes. No, I'm not a left-hander. They, they walk funny, but they're pretty effective. <laughs> they always seem to tilt a little bit to the left. Gladden took it strong to the hole, and they're going to get Chris Daniels with a foul. Well, again, you see the ability of Gladden to move with the basketball. Again, he just takes it to the goal when you try to play him too tough on the perimeter. Alex Robertson gets out of position. He just takes it. We talked about Xavier and what they have coming back next year. They will have Larry Heisel Jr., who played at Wisconsin. He was their sixth man. He'll be eligible to play next year. They also have got Andy Meyer from Dayton, Alder High, that gave him Jim Paxson. And uh, Darnell Hahn, who's from Belmont. Two kids that could probably play right away. Larry Heisel definitely will be. He's been practicing with the team. So they're going to have some talent some depth next year but once again they have got to get the score well again i think losing chip jones losing a score like that is very difficult to replace him during the middle of the season maybe if they'd have had the whole preseason to decide how their points were going to be scored it'd be different but to try to do that during the middle of the season is very tough on any coach and any team 19 for gladden as he matches his season average and some of the flyer faithful heading for the exit says Flyers trailing by 17, with three and a half to go. Derek Dukes still firing. Alex Robertson for three. Scrutchins. Aaron Williams with another rebound. He's in double figures in rebounds. Notice how the Xavier players try to find Gladden any time they can. 80% free throw shooter. It's going to become half time here pretty soon. They're going to have to start laying some bodies on Xavier. That's about all you can do right now is to foul and put them at the free throw line, try to trade whatever free throws they make. Hope they miss, obviously, but trade those for three-point attempts down at the other end of the floor. Five seconds on the shot clock. Gladden took it to the hole and gets fouled. The reach-in by Derek Dukes. That's his fourth, but it's academic now because Jim O'Brien's team facing a monumental struggle. They're just trying to make it respectable. They're down by 17, 2.36 to play. I know that fans throughout the country have to be getting a little frustrated with the end game situation and the rules committee just can't come up with any way to devise to keep people from fouling, particularly now when you can foul a team, give them a chance at only two free throws and come down at the other end and get three yourself. Al Sicard. I think the answer may be at some stage to look at. I don't like the idea of shooting the two free throws and all that. I think when it gets to 10 fouls in the second half, give the team one free throw and the basketball. Let's stay off the free throw line as much as we can. Because the last two minutes can take almost as long as a half can take. But Jim Valvano won a national championship by strategically fouling. So he said now that he's a broadcaster, he hates it because he's got to sit and watch the final two minutes. Well, at least though, in those days, you didn't have the three-point shot at the other end of the floor. Now it's even more pronounced. You almost have to foul in those situations. Jim used it as strategy, and, and they did a good job of fouling the guys that weren't the best free-throw shooters for the most part. Alex Robertson with the three, and Jim O'Brien has called a timeout. Inside two minutes to play. Flyers down by 14. Two, we'll swing it to the Missouri Valley Conference. Two of the leaders in the conference, the Salukis, with Ashraf Amaya against Southwest Missouri State. Game three, the SWAC championship game. Southern against Mississippi Valley State. The winner gets an NCAA bid. In Baton Rouge, LSU was started to pull away from Alabama and beat him for the fifth straight time. Brunel Singleton, the drive. 
and the foul. A 10-0 run for the Tigers. They have a 15-point lead at halftime. Back for the final buck 54 for Dan and Terry. Thank you, Chris. I can relate to that 14-point deficit. That's what we've got here. It's 15 in Baton Rouge, but Dayton down by 14. The Flyers talking it over, and if they're going to foul, they got a couple of guys to choose from, Terry. Well, you know, the, uh, the thing is, right now, you have no choice. You do have to put them on the free throw line, and you have to try to foul the right person, but with no more time than they have left, and they're down by 14, you pretty much have to foul somebody fairly quickly. Good trap here. Try to come up with a steal. If not, don't let it out of there. And again, those are intentional fouls. I know <laughs> the, the frustrating thing as a coach is when somebody calls it intentional on your team. Because you see these and you say, well, that's intentional. They should call that intentional, but they never do. We just found out that Makor Shayok has a contusion of the eye, and he's back on the bench, thank goodness, and looks like everything's okay, but he's not going to be able to play today. Tyrese Walker, who had a big second half. Alex Robertson. <laughs> Speaking of a guy who's had a big game, Aaron Williams. Doesn't seem like he's had many rebounds in this particular game, but he's done everything else. And when you see him go after the ball like that, you say, wow, he is a good rebounder. He's got 11. <laughs> that's a pretty good number. But that's the way he plays. He just he kind of floats along. Him and Gladden are very similar in how they go about getting their numbers. Gladden is more consistent, but Aaron Williams has been a force, offensively and defensively. He'll go to the line. They're both quiet youngsters. You can see that. Uh, obviously very intense. Uh, obviously play hard. But they don't verbalize a lot. Sometimes a team needs not only that leadership, but they need somebody that can verbalize too. He looks bigger than 6'9". He almost looks like he's about 6'11". Those arms seem a little bit longer. And sometimes he plays bigger than 6'9". You know, we keep saying if he continues to play like this, uh, they're going to be a very fine basketball team. We talked about that even before the game started. He's had a great day. Williams with 15, Gladden with 19, Sicard with the jumper. Flyers down by 13. Al Sicard. Gladden wisely brings it back out, and that's not the guy you want to foul, but Robertson has no choice because time is the enemy right now. A minute 19 to go. Good job by Xavier, too, to get the ball in his hands. That's the third. Robertson, his third foul. Dan Patrick along with Terry Holland, the University of Dayton Arena. Coming up next, Southern Illinois and Southwest Missouri State. And the Salukis under Rich Heron having a great year. A couple of years ago, he won 24 games, didn't make the tournament, and let it be known that he should have made it. This year, he may not have to yell. Gladden's got 20. Gladden actually averages a little over 20 for games in the conference. Sicard. Walker got a piece of it. and maybe appropriately enough, those two team up. Alex Robertson, it touched net, but the outside of it. Well, of course, Dayton's frustrated to this point, but they can't do anything else. They've got to extend their defense, and that means you're going to give up some easy baskets, and you've got to take quick shots at the other end, which means you're probably going to miss them. Williams with 17 points, 11 rebounds. Five with 20, and Aaron Williams sits down. He certainly earned a rest this afternoon. This is a pretty tough place to play. You brought your Cavaliers up here a couple of times. Yeah, actually one time with Virginia and one time with Davidson way back, and we were lucky to win. We did win both games, but you're right. This is a very difficult arena in which to win. I think it, they were something like 2-18 and 18 in this arena. So you're coming into the game, so of course this is a big, big win for them. It gives them a, a bye in the first round of the tournament. They've got to be very pleased with where they are right now. Inside a minute, Southern Illinois, Southwest Missouri State coming up as soon as we're complete. Al 
a card to steal to Sean Scrutchins. Robertson with the miss. I like what Dayton's done here. They weren't going to continue to foul. The game was completely out of reach, but they played good defense. They came up with two steals. But again, you know, they, they're letting the game go ahead and in. And the exclamation points. Maurice Brantley at the buzzer. Xavier, 72 to 56 winners is Pete Gillen and Jim O'Brien shake hands. Xavier against Notre Dame coming up Tuesday. Dayton at Detroit, March 7th. For Terry Holland, I'm Dan Patrick. Chris Mallory.